So now that we have set up our Adobe Illustrator workspace, we have a two column toolbox, we've got all our panels ready to go. Now we need to check under the hood of the car. Let's check the engine. So under a Mac, it's Illustrator menu, preferences. Some computers might say settings. Or if you're on a PC, it's edit menu. And way down here would be preferences. And we're just going to start with the general preferences. Okay, one of the things you want to look at is under general preferences, I would highlight the keyboard increment and type 0 0.0139. That is the default measurement or distance when you want something to move when you hit your arrow key on your keyboard. Point zero one three nine and I'll hit enter or return okay I'll go right back here I didn't know that would turn that off so let's go back to our general preferences there there we go point zero one three nine points constraint angle is zero corner radius is 12 those are all default settings you have a lot of settings here in Illustrator but the nice thing is that by the time we get down to smart guides, the rest is all default after that. So I'm gonna go over the buttons that really will affect the way you work in my classes. I don't disable the auto add and delete. I keep that turned off. That is a feature where if you have a line drawn and you're on your pen tool, it will automatically turn on the add anchor point or the delete anchor point so I don't disable that function I do not use precise cursors there's a keyboard shortcut to turn that feature on usually you don't want it on because it gets harder to see your um, your icons so I leave that off show tool tips when you hover over something you'll get a yellow bar showing you what a tool tip is so let's see if that comes up or not. Uh, it's not doing that here, but um, you want tool tips, okay? Or rich tool tips. Leave those turned on, especially if you're new to Illustrator. They're little pop-up bars that kind of give you information as you go. Show or hide rulers. I'm not even sure why that's a preference. You can hit Command R on a Mac to show your rulers or Command R on a Mac to hide your rulers. On a PC, you would hit Control R or Control R again to hide or show your ruler. So I'm not sure why that's there. I'll just leave it off. Anti-aliased artwork. If you've uh, gone through my demos in Photoshop, you know about anti-alias pixels. They're semi-transparent pixels right along the edge of artwork that allows your eye to kind of blend curves better on the screen. I'll leave that turned on. Select the same tint percentage. I've never ever used that. So if you want to turn it on, great. Even if I turned it on, I don't know when I would even be using it. So I'll just leave it off. Show me my home screen when I'm not working on any document in Illustrator. I'll always keep that turned on. Use legacy when you are creating a new file. Use the legacy interface. Legacy means older versions. I don't wanna go back in time. I wanna work with what's the latest and greatest. So I'm not gonna use old legacy interfaces. I'm gonna work with what's the latest. Display print size at 100% zoom. We'll keep that turned on. Append or add converted upon opening legacy files. I'll turn that on. Again, when you're opening legacy files, you're opening older ones. Show system compatibility issues. Why not? I don't think I have any, but uh, you might have an older computer, so keep those turned on. On the right, there is a feature called double click to isolate. I highly recommend you turn that off. Okay, if you're advanced in Illustrator, great, turn it on. But if you are new to Illustrator, I've had too many new students accidentally double click something and then everything else kind of grays out 
and they're like, why can't I click on anything else? And they start to panic. So if you're new, don't use double click to isolate. I'll show you what that means later, but if you're new, turn it off. I'm not gonna use Japanese crop marks. What I am going to use is transform pattern tiles. I wanna keep that turned on. If I have any corners, definitely scale rounded corners. And most importantly, there's a tool tip, okay? There's those little tool tips that pop up. That's the tool tips, there we go. And absolutely, positively turn on scale strokes and effects. If this is not turned on and you have an outline on an object and you shrink that object, the outline will not change. It can really mess up your artwork. So this is one of the first things you want to check and always make sure it is turned on. Enable content aware defaults. I'll be honest, I've never used them, but uh, sure, let's turn it on. Why not? Honor the scale on PDF import. Let's turn that on. Again, I've never used it, but sounds like it would be to my benefit. Zoom with the mouse wheel. I don't like using the mouse wheel. I prefer to use my zoom tool, so I'm going to keep that turned off. I'm not using a trackpad. If you are, great. I'm going to turn that off. I don't use it. Use preview bounds. I'll turn that on. And then I come up to the upper left to go to the next category. In Photoshop, you have a next button to go to the next category. Here in Illustrator, you don't. So I will jump down to the next category. Looks like a lot of buttons, but these are all your defaults. Most of them are turned off anyway. Right down here, if you are hard of seeing, you might wanna make your anchor points a little bigger. You know, I've had older students say, hey, it's kind of hard to see things. I go, okay, make your anchor points bigger, but I'll keep mine on the default. Um, handles just shows you solid points or uh, hollow anchor or direction handle points. I'll just leave it on the default. Highlight anchor points when you mouse over them. I'll keep that turned on. Show me where my anchor points are if I move my mouse over them. Show me the handles when multiple anchor points are selected. There is a good trick for that. So I'll turn that on. And hide the corner widget for angles greater than 177. That's just a default, so I'll leave that. What I want to turn off though is enable rubber band this is a feature that is supposed to show you a preview of what your curve will look like before you even draw it and i guarantee you it doesn't work Fo or photoshop illustrator worked fine for the first 20 plus years without the rubber band so i'm going to recommend you turn those both off You'll learn how to draw perfect curves with me and I've never used the rubber band and you will be just fine. So I recommend you turn that off. It's a personal preference. If you think it works better with it, great, go ahead. But you're not gonna hear me talk about it. So I might as well just turn it off. Up here under type, these are all your default settings. I highly recommend you turn off automatic bulleted and number lists. You can make those when you want them, not automatic. Show character alternates. Those just get in the way, so I'll turn that off. This is the one that's really annoying. Fill new type objects with placeholder text. That means every time you click on your type tool, you click to type, you're going to get Latin text. It's called lorem ipsum. It just pops up on your screen and there's no use for that. So I will turn that off as well. Okay. Under units of measurement, general measurements should be set to inches. So boxes that you draw or stars or circles, you can define them by inch measurements. Strokes or outlines are always measured in points and type. 
regardless of the program, is measured in points. Under guides and grid, I recommend that if you are going to use guides, you don't use bright colored guides. They're just hard to see on the sheet of paper. So I recommend red guides. They stand out very clearly and they're very easy to work with. If you are doing a gridded type of layout and you want to line things up here and there, you could lay a grid over your illustration page. I'm not going to be using grids, so it doesn't matter. I'll just keep it on that dull gray. Under smart guides, smart guides are guides that automatically show up and give you hints on how to line things up or how to measure distances or things like that. You want your smart guides to be easily readable, so I recommend you set them to a dark color, like dark blue or black or red. Okay, I'll go with medium blue. Glyph guides, I've never used, but you don't want them being the same color just to be safe, so I'll leave it at the default. Smart guides can help, but again, they can also get in the way. So you'll notice down here, you've got buttons for seven different types of smart guides. As you draw with your pen tool, you can have little measurement lines pop up at every 90 degrees or every 45 degrees. I can just click and drag my mouse. I don't need constant guides flashing all over my screen like this. So I'll turn that one off. I don't do transforming with smart guides. I have a free transform tool for that. So I'll turn that off. If I'm drawing and I want to line things up, I definitely want alignment guides to help me to line up objects so I have a clean look on my page. Tell me when I'm hovering over an object or on, when I'm hovering over the center of a circle that's not necessarily visible. So I want object highlighting. I don't need spacing guides. I don't need measurement labels but I do want Illustrator to tell me when I'm on an anchor point versus when I'm on a path or a section of the line. I really just recommend those three. Help me to align things. Tell me when I'm on the object, especially if I can't see it, like a center point on a circle. Tell me when I'm on an anchor point versus the path. Again, after Smart Guides, you're not going to be dealing with slices. That's for web page design. Go take a web design class for that. Hyphenation. You can add words to the Illustrator dictionary telling Illustrator what words you don't want to hyphenate. Uh, plugins. Plugins are additional files that you can buy or download from other companies that add more functionality to Illustrator. Experiment with that on your own, on your own computer. But if you're taking a class with me, we're not going to be using those. Scratch disks are the disks that Illustrator gets its memory from. So you, I only have my startup disk, my hard drive. So there's really nothing to change here. Under your user face, you want to keep it right here. 20, 25 years ago, this is how bright everything was and it really ruined your eyes. I can't believe over 20 years ago, this is how I used to work in Illustrator. No wonder I got eyesight problems. Then they started going a little darker, a little easier on the eyes. Then they went a little darker. Or if this is still not dark enough, you can go pretty dark. Okay, but that's the medium dark value. Canvas color, we just match. All of these are default settings. I don't really change anything here. This is all good. User interface scaling is good. Performance, the only thing I recommend is looking at GPU performance. If you like zooming in on objects like you do in Photoshop, you take your zoom tool, you click and drag to the right to zoom in or drag to the left to zoom out. This is great. The only drawback is it tends to make sharp corners look a little rough on your screen. 
I like everything on my screen to look as precise as possible in my drawing. And I know how to zoom in just fine without using animated zoom in Illustrator. So I personally turn GPU performance off. It tends to make my sharp corners look a little clunky. If you turn it on, you can use animated zoom, but sometimes your corners will look a little odd on the screen. I like them to look good, so I turn it off. File handling, this is all default settings. I don't even look at it. I don't even change it. I've never changed it and you will be fine. Clipboard handling, I've never changed this. You want to keep PDF copies when you are copying to a clipboard. So you want all this information. This is default information. Keep it as it is. Appearance of black. Black is not necessarily black, which is such a ridiculous statement. But if you really think about it, in the quote unquote real world, this has to do with the printing industry. If you have an area of solid black ink, you are putting black ink or fluid on a white sheet of paper when you go to print. And that black will soak into that white. And we all know black and white mixed together creates gray. So when you use 100% black ink on a white sheet of paper, the black mixes with the white and you get a dark, 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 dark gray. You don't get a true black, okay? Some printers will call out a rich black, which means You do 100% black ink plus some magenta ink plus some cyan or blue ink. You mix multiple inks to get a true rich black. Okay, over here, example of a rich black. True, true black. So right here it says display all blacks on the screen as rich black. Output all blacks as rich black. That's just the default, so I'll leave it. And under devices... If you're going to use a Wacom tablet, enable that. But really, every time I come into Illustrator, I check my general. I want these four, at least these four right here enabled. Selection and anchor display. I turn off the bottom two check marks here for the rubber band. Under type, I turn off the bottom three check marks. Those are somewhat newer features. They don't work as well as uh, maybe Adobe wanted them to. And they just get in the way, so I turn them off. Under units, it should say inches, points, points. Under guides, I would set them to red so they're easy to to see. And under smart guides, I set them to a dark color. I need the top two check marks on the left, the top check mark on the right. That's it. Those three smart guides. After you get to smart guides, like I said, these are all default settings. And you click OK. Then you are ready to actually start working in Illustrator. So I'll see you in the next demos and we'll get you started.